for the masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network. Good evening. How you doing? It's Fade to Black. How you doing? Today is Monday, September. Uh, <laughs> September. Today is Monday, October 2nd, 2023. I've been saying September all day today, and I have no reason to do that, especially because of what today is. After the show tonight, when I'm done, when Serena, D.C., and I sign off, I got about three, four minutes. I got a couple of things I got to do. Then I'm in the car. I'm going to Egypt tonight. (laughs) Yeah, like, I don't know. I mean, all of the uh, the the crazy prep that has to go into all of that and and getting things uh, set up and and things in place and talking to my neighbors and telling them, you know, I'm going to be out of town, all that stuff, all the way through to just just everything that's got to get done. It's you know, it's passports, it's it's uh, boarding passes, uh, uh, ride to the airport, all, all, it, everything. And I keep saying September. You know, I don't know how many times today I plugged in October 2nd on somebody's app. Or <laughs> it's like, it's, it's, it's just crazy. Anyway, today is Monday, October 2nd. This is the only show obviously, that we will be doing this week. And it's a very special night. Serena D.C. is with us. And now I am going to, now I'm going, let me preempt the show a little bit. We set up this show a while ago because tonight is the premiere of her movie. It's called We Are Not Alone. And we ran with that. Well, it turns out that the distribution company is releasing the film in the morning. Yeah. So now, 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 now it's not, I, I, I had champagne. I was, I was, man, I was, I was in the mood. It's a world premiere, red carpet. I've got it rolled out in there. I was taking pictures of myself and, and now the film is going to premiere in the morning, but you can pre-order it now and head over to any streaming service that you want. So that is the warm-up of the show tonight. I want to remind everybody we will be back on the air on October 16th, which is a Monday. I get back a a little bit before that. So uh, there you go. You guys are going to know because I'm streaming. I'll be posting. All right. So uh, help support the show. Help support what we do and the team here, by the way. I got a really cool birthday gift today in the mail. Yeah, yeah. And uh uh Secret Santa kind of kind of thing. I can't, you know, but man, it's the perfect, the perfect birthday gift uh arrived today. And uh so there you go. All right, uh what am I saying? Oh, t-shirts, two t-shirts, two ways to get them. The links are below two links, two, two, two. That's Chuck Woolery. For for you kids out there that don't remember Chuck Woolery, we'll, we'll be right back in, in two, two and two. We'll be right back in two and two. Chuck Woolery. What was the name of that show? The, the Love Connection? Was that it? I'll I'll check. I'll check uh the uh the chat. What was it? What was that show called? What was the show called? All right, let's get straight to it. Serena DC is with us. Uh, it is the premiere of her film, 
We are not alone. I, I think I've got a, a few seconds in the film. That's that for for you, fade or not, right? Right? You get you get that, and uh, everybody's in this film. We're going to go through all of that, including Jacques Vallée, Danny Sheehan's in, Apollo Harris, Adam Curry, and Andrea Parent is in this film. I think Mike Mazzola does a drive by too, as well. And many others will be talking about that. She is an internationally recognized TV star. She's a writer. She's a director. She's an executive producer. I want you to head over to her website, Elysium. Uh, the links for that are below. So you can see all of uh, the stuff that she and her company uh, produces and is in production with. It's a lot of TV series. Um, she did the the contact, the CE5 experience with Dr. Greer, uh, Hollywood Disclosure with Serena DC. That's now in its second season. She's got the reality series called Dream Life. All of that, you can check it out below. And, uh, oh, yeah, Instant Hotel, too. I don't want to leave that one out. One of my favorite shows. So with all of that. Let's just get straight to it because she's right here, Serena DC in the flesh. Hey. What's going on? How you doing? You know when when Serena, it's always uh, you know great to hang out with you and see you and all of that stuff. <laughs> you too. You have, you have got so much going on. How do you keep all of that straight? And I'm serious because. You know, when you call me up and you go, Jimmy, I'm I'm doing a, another film, and uh, would you be in it? Uh, you know, I'm like, yeah, sure. I, in my mind, I think that that's all you're doing this year. Yeah, <laughs> that's not the case. You, you've you've got a lot going on. I do. I guess. You know, like I recently turned 40 and in my mind, I've just got this clock ticking and it just keeps saying to me, if you're going to do it, you have to do it now. You know, all those dreams you have, all those goals you have, all those ideas you have, you need to do it now. Because as a woman in Hollywood, I mean, you know, we age out pretty pretty quickly. I got 10 years max left in front of this camera, Jimmy, and then I'm going to have to just direct. You think it's 10? <laughs> oh, you're, you're gambling on 10? Yeah, okay. with both you think it's 10? Filler, yeah. 10, I think I can, yeah, I can do it. You think you can stretch it? You can stretch it? You got a good doctor? Right. But um, I kid, I kid, not really. But um, the 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 other part is, um, you've been to my house, right? Yeah. And uh, you've been to and my house. I, and, mm -hmm. Well, hold on. Did not see. Wait, I'm the host of the show. <laughs> I'm I'm driving this car right now. Okay, I'm driving this car. So you've been to my house, and uh, I have I have a nice place. I do, I do, I, you know, it, it's nice, it's nice. Um, uh, but uh, so now I'm going to your house, and I know Hollywood like the back of my hand. Mm. Okay, every street, the bird streets, the flats, <laughs> I know all the canyons, all of them, right? I, I know what's going on, and so that day, and I'm right, you know, I'm you know, pretty excited, and and uh, your assistant sends me your address. And I looked at it and I looked at it again. And I, and I said to myself, bullshit. <laughs> no, 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 no. Now I'm not going to say any more than that, but then I thought it's gotta be a mistake. So, because I have, I've been to your neighbor's house I've been to the house across the street. I've been to the house down on the corner on Sunset, right? The big one. And, and so, I, and I'm looking at it. So anyway, I pull up <laughs> for total transparency, Serena. I, there was no way when I pulled up and, and hit the buzzer that you were going to answer. I was like, I, th th no, this is not, this is, this is wrong. She's going to call me back. No, there's, it's, 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 we left a zero off. <laughs> right? so. Actually, that's a really good prank. You could pull on someone. If you found you out could. like a celebrity's address, you could be like, come over and hang out. You could. Wear you a could. onesie. And then they go and knock on Brad Pitt's front door or something like that. Yeah, right, 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 <laughs> right, right, right. Cool. right. 
So, um, but uh, that, I just wanted to share that. I thought you were pranking me. I was waiting. No, I swear. I swear. I'm waiting for somebody to jump out of the bushes. Yeah. <laughs> I think you what know, I'm going to take like... from this is that when you hang out with me, I come across as really ghetto. Okay. <laughs> Because I think you, yeah. from the sounds of it, you're expecting me to live in like a shack or something. So, oh, dang, man. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and, and you know, I, you know, I'm not. No, I guess, man. I guess I am kind of insinuating that. I didn't yeah. mean to, but, but yeah, yeah. I was. Uh, that was. Uh, that was a pretty trippy day. So, oh, but when it? you see that, right, and then it all starts to make sense. Mm-hmm. When um, uh, you've you've got these ideas, all of the ideas get turned into a production. They make it mm-hmm. to a TV show. You're hosting. You're nominated for these awards. All of this stuff is part of that reality. And that was the check that that I put myself in. It was it was very cool. It was a lot of fun. And and you deserve all of every every everything that's coming your way, including this film. Uh, we are not mm-hmm. alone now. Um, the the film itself where did the idea come from i love this story so much um, but i also tell it a lot so i'll try and keep it as authentic as i can basically it was covid 2020 and i was sitting at home with my partner at the time evan and we were um we saw close encounters of the fifth kind come up on the tv screen so we're like cool because we were always really into ufos and ets and stuff like that but we'd never seen a ufo we we'd looked we'd gone ufo hunting everywhere you could imagine never saw anything ever. So we watched Close Encounters and we're like, okay, cool, CE5, sounds interesting. Let's go and try it. So we went out to this place in Victor- in, in regional Victoria in Australia, so, you know, in the country. And um, we did the CE5. I did the reverse Google Earth kind of visualisation. And at the end of it, we opened our eyes and then it happened. The the biggest, brightest apparition like you could ever imagine. The only way I can kind of describe it is like a sheet flapping before our eyes, but the sheet was made of chrome and it was freaking enormous. And it lasted probably 20 to 25 seconds right in front of us, clearly not from, from this world. And after we saw that, that was my holy shit moment. That was that mm-hmm. was like wow. Like I, I it felt like um, their way of saying to me, "Hey, Serena, I see what you're doing, but you're doing it about the wrong topic." Start talking about us. So I immediately went home and I googled Dr. Stephen Greer. Look, actually, I looked him up on Instagram and I found him. At the time, he was only following about 40 people, and I I reached out to him. I sent him a message. I'm like, you know, hey, you know, I'm I'm a documentary filmmaker. I'd love to have a chat with you about CE5. I just saw something crazy in my backyard. And and he replied. And I'm like, how the hell does this iconic man actually – see my message in his flood of a million messages and Instagram. So I went over and looked at who he was following. And by some freaky stroke of a miracle, this man was following me. So anyway, we ended up getting on the phone together and I had a conversation with him and I'm like, um, you know, I, I want to meet you. I want to learn more about C5. I want to make a movie. And he said, cool, come to my house. So I ended up flying to Charlottesville in Virginia, where he lives on a beautiful, massive, stunning property and um, uh, asked him to be my mentor. He agreed. And we made contact the, the movie together. But while I was making contact, the C5 experience, I started to meet all these amazing people like you, Jimmy, um, Michael Mazzola, who was the director of Unacknowledged, um, Close Encounters, the the new one, The Lost Century, all of those movies. And I and I said to him, I'm like, hey, do you want to make a movie together? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> and so we did. And that I guess that's kind of kind of how it happened. Crazy story, right? Well, yeah, it, it almost sounds sounds kind of typical. And let me tell you why it sounds typical. You, it's your journey. Right. And you're seeing it from your perspective, looking out, but here, and as you're finding out in the UFO Mm. community, synchronicities and coincidences in the universe are stuff you just don't trifle with. 
you t- you got to take that stuff really, really serious because right. if you turn around and you ask for something and this is part of your heart and part of your bliss, you better be prepared because the universe is going to slap you upside the head and, and make sure that it happens. Um, right after all of this went down, uh, Michael, and I know he's listening right now, uh, king of all troublemakers, Michael Mazzola. Yeah, really yeah, cool. yeah, exactly. Um, he calls me up and he says, man, I've got somebody that, uh, you, you have to meet. And, and he's done this to me countless of times, uh, countless times. And, and he's laughing about that right now because he knows, uh, how many times I've got the text or the phone mm-hmm. call from him. Uh, saying that exact thing. But when he does say that to me, I take it serious. And and he was the one that introduced the two of us and and boom and uh you know you turn around and and hit the ground running together. Uh I've just been very impressed. I I'm not sure I'm not sure I, and again I just want to be very polite with this. I'm not sure how this story ends. I'm talking about the UFO, the ET, the contact version of it. You, when, and again, I want you to take this the wrong way. When you first get into this, just like everybody else, or when anybody first gets into this, you think that there's an end to this, that there is a last chapter to the book and that you are going to get there. That's simply not the case. Um, you, you've uh, the rabbit interviewed. hole is deep. It's What's really, it? really the rabbit hole is really, really it's deep. So, <laughs> it, it's bottomless. I would, yeah. I would nearly suggest that it was bottomless, but I don't think we've ever been closer to seeing the bottom uh, mm-hmm. than before than than we are today. How do you feel about that? As as a researcher and a director and a producer and on screen talent, well, you as know, you're they- doing this, you know what goes through your mind. First of all, just regarding this movie, We Are Not Alone, I'm so glad that it's coming out right now because we started filming it over two years ago and um, in the last couple of months, Michael and I have been freaking out because we're like, this movie is about just before they come, but it feels like they're about to come right now. (laughs) So we really wanted to make sure that the movie came out before our little friends um, made more of a global appearance. But in fact, at the moment, Michael and I are working on on another film. Um, It's... (sighs) Working title at the moment is Catastrophic catastrophic Disclosure, but it's all about what's happening over in D.C. and in Congress. Um, you know, David Grush has come forward and he's, um, he's basically told people that there is, oh, he's not saying extraterrestrial bodies, but obviously organic material not from this planet alludes to that. And so um, this, mo- this afternoon I spent time with Steve Bassett. Steve Bassett is the original UFO lobbyist in Congress. And so he's in Congress every single day. And he speaks to Grush and Danny Sheehan and, and all of the people in Congress. And he really believes that disclosure on a mass scale, meaning disclosure from our government, actually saying we are not alone, is going to happen in the next one to two months. So not in five years' time or ten years' time, in one to two months. And he's this is a highly intelligent guy that is not basing that on um, just a hypothesis. He's, he's basing it on what he's seeing and hearing in front of him every single day in Congress. So there is some crazy stuff happening right now and it's and it's such an exciting time to be part of the ufo world because you know when i first started people still thought that you were a freak or an idiot or insane if you believe that there was life on other planets but now i think there's been such a huge shift in this world and it's the opposite if you be- if you don't believe you're the weirdo if you don't believe you're you're kind of the freak so yeah it it I I think it's it's even it's it's even crazier than that, and and what you just said is crazy, right? That I mean, really, the the it, the that those kinds of statements ten years ago does put you right in the middle of crazy town, right? Yeah. You can't say those things uh, today. Today, oh. what you just said was soft. It's you know what I mean. It's actually yeah. crazier than that. When um, I was just watching uh, the coverage uh, uh, with the Hill, and and I, I just uh, I tweeted it out, 
and uh, the uh, uh, this uh, it's on the, the the Hills YouTube channel where they're talking about thirty two. This is the Hill, by the way, right? Okay, so. When you look at, uh, uh, yeah, we have the New York Times, the L.A. Times, uh, whatever they have over in London, whatever that paper's called, not not the not the trashy ones, the real ones, mm-hmm. um, but, but whatever, right? The, B, the BBC, and it, it, we have that, but people go to uh, you know Politico, people go to the Hill, they go to other alternative. Uh, uh, news outlets for for their stuff uh, today, yeah. uh, for for not 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 that it's more accurate. It, it's not even that. It's that you have so many choices now, and people go where they're comfort. You know what? The, what they dig, but but the hill is respected, mm. and this this new piece. You know, it's about thirty two whistleblowers that thirty two that have chosen to come forward that are talking to the Senate are talking to Congress, uh, are talking to the IG because David Grush came forward. Right. You know, and it's somebody had to be first, right? There's always, <laughs> right? You and your friends don't know how to swim, but you're taking swimming lessons. Mm. And somebody's got to jump in the pool first. Somebody does, you know, and you're looking at each other. And then once everyone one, wants to jump in. Yeah, yeah. Right. once one jumps in and, and nobody drowns, Right. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. I'll check this out. That's what David Grush did. Right. And this is, you know, um, you know, Bob Salas, right? Of course. Yeah. Legend, legendary human. And so, you know, for those people that don't know, he was involved in the, well, when the missiles were being disarmed back in the day. And so he's got a lot of intel on all of that, on seeing the UFOs over the missile silos and actually seeing them um, being disarmed. Um, But he has never come forward um, publicly telling his story about how he has had an abduction experience not just a little abduction experience might have seen something out of the corner of his eye a full-on abduction experience and he granted me the first ever interview last week where he actually allowed me to get Caroline Corey uh, from Tear in the Sky to regress him he did a full hypnotic regression and in that he described in absolute graphic detail the abduction experience he had and his wife had the experiments that were done on him by extraterrestrials and this is bob freaking salas man you know mm-hmm. this is a, a really high up um, military personnel character that is now coming forward in 2023 and saying hey i was abducted by aliens and here's my story you know and so you're seeing these incredibly credible people coming forward and and sharing these stories and you know it it just makes you wonder like who else is going to come forward how many people has this really been happening to when all of a sudden there's no stigma surrounding um alien abduction do we all of a sudden find out that one in ten people have experienced something like this um you know the world is changing so quickly jimmy my head is like Spinning, I don't know what to do next, you know? Yeah, Bob Salas, you know what? Uh, okay, there's two sides to Bob Salas. There is the guy that you see doing an interview or presentation. That dude is serious mm-hmm. and on point. I, I would almost say, and I think he would agree with this, he almost seems angry. You know, because he's just he's trying to get people to listen, right? Yeah. And and so there's that side. And then, but the 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 Bob Salas that you that you meet, you couldn't meet a nicer, cooler, mm-hmm. or pretty funny too. By the way, he's um, cute, honest, he's, he's lovable it, and cute and adorable. I, I love him. You well, know, that's your that's your call. That's that that's <laughs> that's not my call. But but he's got this honest face. The, these I this thing he has been there, yeah. and he's got this thing about him. I love that guy, and he is uh, just an amazing individual. So how did um, when you when you uh, if, <laughs> When you look back at where you are today mm. and and the choices that you've made very rapidly, okay, this is, we're talking about three, three four years. year, three year, right, right. Um, 
that's that's crazy timing. It seems odd mm. for you to to have made these choices yeah. at this time. Is is that again? Is that the universe? Right? I think it, it is. Don't you think it's odd? I'm, yeah, it is odd. It's extremely odd. I'm going to give you a, a strange sort of like analogy. But, you know, before working in this industry, I used to be in the hair and beauty industry. I owned um, eyelash extension brands and hair extension brands. I was an entrepreneur boss babe, you know. And um, I was relatively successful, moderately successful, doing pretty good. Um, but everything was really hard. Every deal I had to close was so difficult. Everywhere I wanted to get my products stocked, I had to bang and bang and bang on every single door to, to, to just to get anywhere you know, um, whereas since I've been doing this, since I've been making content about UFOs and ETs, it's like all the doors are open. Every single door is open. Everyone that I meet, like you, Jimmy, everyone I meet, it's like, oh my God, Serena, you've got to meet this person, this person, and this person, and this person. And they follow through and I meet them. And, it, and it's, it's just been like this pyramid, you know, like Dr. Greer was at the, at the top of my pyramid and he introduced me to Michael and Michael introduced me to you and you introduced me to Jason and Shurka as an example and, and, and Bashar, you introduced me to Bashar and it's just been this whole like amazing journey and at the moment where it's led me is uh, I'm spending a lot of time with abductees. So I just um, interviewed Whitley Strieber who was the, um, I guess the muse for the uh, movie Contact, uh, sorry, Communion. And um, it, it's just it's just so crazy because our world, this UFO ET paranormal world is so complex. And, and I think why I've been chosen by them or the universe or whatever is because I tell the more human side of what's going on in this world. I don't like to talk about conspiracy theories. I don't like to talk about what's going on with government cover-ups. It's important that's not my story to tell. My story is about the human experience. You know, how uh, how is being abducted affecting people? How is doing C5 and seeing craft affecting people? What is the purpose of it all? What do these extraterrestrials want with us? Because they are giving us messages, Jimmy. They're giving all of the people they contact messages. And the message is the same every single time. You want to know what the message is? Yeah, tell me we should all be strippers and we should start doing it. I right know, now. I know it, it, it's poles. It, it, we have to oh, have poles installed. Poles, right? I, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Manna from <laughs> no. heaven. Manna from well, heaven. I mean, like, Manna obviously, I guess um, we, the movie We Are Not Alone is about that. It's about the ET's urgent message of humanity. Uh, sorry, for humanity. And that message for humanity from the ETs is not coming from weird, crazy tinfoil hat wearing people or hillbillies from the, you know, middle America that um, are making up stories. It's coming from really highly credible, bona fide people. In this film, we have Jacques Vallée. Can we go on for a minute about how epic Jacques Vallée is? Like for him to yeah, even... Yeah, absolutely we can. <laughs> for him to even be in this film is just so mind-blowing but he felt called to be in the film because he wanted to share the et's message for humanity same with paula harris same with greer same with danny sheehan like he's the most unlikely character in the world to be trying to spread et's urgent message for humanity and yet he's in this movie um obviously you need to watch it to get all of the details but the main message is an environmental one and it does uh, also talk about the nuclear issue that we have in this world the ets are really worried about what us weird little humans are doing on this planet probably a little bit less about us and a little bit more about the beautiful ball that we live on but um they're certainly sending us some very clear messages about what we need to do so we don't all fucking die <laughs> The, um, uh, the the part of that which um, it, it, if we if we think about it over and over again, the big minds out there, the the physicists, the astrophysicists, the astronomers, the big thinkers that sit behind big telescopes and measure stars and movements and 
and things and design rockets and search for exoplanets way beyond my brain capacity. Right? Mm -hmm, me too. But one of the things, one of the things that they have suggested, and it's only because, I mean, think of, you know, like Oppenheimer, for instance, is a really good example of this, is that um, the really big thinkers know how dangerous technology is. And if you are going to uh, advance as a civilization, how many civilizations get to a point where, like, we are here and then somebody screws it up? Mm. Right? right? Somebody just screws it up. Well, I think that it, now as crazy as it, that's coming from the intellectuals, not from our community, but as crazy as that sounds, if ET is advanced enough to get here, they have also seen other civilizations screw it up. And they know that we haven't screwed it up yet. yet. Right? Yet. We have the capability of lighting this candle right now. And it could be really, really bad. Like, mm. over. Mm. And But we haven't done that yet. So why wouldn't ET share that message or be concerned of course they would right. and and I'm, i i i don't i don't think that that you know it, it's it's everybody just has this fantasy that et is here to help us and to warn us about what why would do you know how many countless civilizations they've seen mm -hmm. burn out right yeah, so no, I I'm think okay the biggest fear, I, I mean, you know, Oppenheimer, that movie, you know, I didn't know too much about the atomic bomb. Obviously, I knew what had happened in Hiroshima and Kyoto and everything like that, but I didn't really know that much. And watching that movie was just so, excuse the pun, but mind blowing because, mm. it, you know, just the fact that literally one person had the entire our entire civilization in in their hands in that one moment if things had gone wrong we'd all we would all be gone you know so so it makes complete sense to me that we only have about three thousand years worth of recorded history um but they've only really 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 been prolifically showing up in the last sort of well since what happened with the atomic bomb because you know like we now have the tools to destroy ourselves before we had the tools to destroy ourselves really slowly, hand to hand mm -hmm. combat, but now, mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> just like that, yeah, just, just like that, just like that. that. You know, the the Chinese um, uh, did a press release today, and the press release. Okay, so uh, let me just get to the press release. It was very interesting. They did what I think is the unthinkable. You think Oppenheimer did the unthinkable? Mm. The Chinese on their space station, right, lit a candle. Now, you're not supposed to be striking matches in an oxygen-rich atmosphere while you're orbiting. Yeah, yeah, right, right. They lit <laughs> what? That is a so crazy. Candle, uh, right on a live stream, by the way, <laughs> and 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 everybody wanted to see what fire and a flame would it's look like, like in, in the vacuum of space, right? And and microgravity. Guess guess what happened? Mm. You know, we burn a candle here; it's a teardrop, right? Mm -hmm. You've seen it a million, right? Right? I could do it now. Well, no, I don't have a candle, but if I had a candle. So we all know what a candle looks like when it burns, or any fire when it burns. Guess what? It burned in a sphere. Ooh. That's so cool. Right? Yeah. It, it's, it's just like a bubble, you know, water when it floats in space. Oh, right? like a full, like, ball. Like, it's wow. a ball. That's what, that's what the flame did. But it also now, could have blown okay, up Okay, wait, the wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so now, now let's let's stop and unpack that. It's a cool press release. It's a cool experiment. It's a great visual, and we've learned something. That's on the surface. Now let's dig a little bit deeper. All, not all, but so many of the UFO sightings. And what people have described for millennia 
not just recent, have been these glowing balls of light. Mm. Now think about that for a second. So could it be something inside of an, uh, you know, uh, uh, a gravity bubble, right? With intense heat and the gravity th- and, and, and then what's inside of it is lighting from all directions. You're making me and, think of the movie burning. of the Martha lights, you know, like maybe yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Well, lights see, are. but that's what I'm talking about. That's exactly that's that's my point. Right. That's exactly my point. So it's the Marfa lights, it's the Brown Mountain lights, it's it's Joshua Tree, it's yeah. Sedona, it's everybody's backyard. We've been hearing about this for thousands of years. And the Chinese do this experiment, and I'm reading it. I'm like, okay, I see what they are announcing, but I see something else here. That would describe ball lightning or or all of this other phenomena, the things that I've seen in the sky, the things that Greer and his CE5s and you have done and we've all done together, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe, right? Right? You see what I'm I'm, I'm, doing? I think there's a going down the rabbit hole, Jimmy. I yeah, see. man, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling have you. Have you watched um, the movie that you star in, The Martha Lights, yet? <laughs> have you seen no. it? No. No, it's just no, been released didn't. on Unified. So if you, if any, if anyone here is a subscriber on well, Unified, well, thanks for telling me. Thanks for telling me. Check I it mean, out. I know. You know. Well, we did the you, premiere you, on on Unified. You text me week. all day long about what I'm eating and and what I'm wearing to bed, you but you don't tell me when our film premieres. Can I tell you why? Honestly, let me tell you why. I feel like you do. Talking about me doing a lot of stuff, you do so much, and I feel like at this point in your career, not that you're not grateful, but I feel like you're probably a bit jaded now. Because I mean, like, I was watching you the week that it came out, like last week, week before, I can't remember. Um, I was watching your Instagram, and you're there, like, filming Into the Vortex season two, and then you're off gallivanting with Mr. Fox. And now you're going, uh, you know, on to the pyramids. I don't even know why, but I'm presuming so you can, like, go to, like, some hidden chamber and, like, sleep in a sarcophagus, you know? Like, you're jaded, Jimmy. <laughs> That's why. I also Wait, feel like I don't want to burden you with my my stuff, you know. Oh, man. Small, you you have to. Really I, and- no, nah, man. No, nah, man. I want to live in your guest house. I, I would pack up today. <laughs> And move into your guest house. Yeah. I would do it today just so I could be in your circle. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not just telling you right now, everybody, <laughs> I'm not blowing smoke. Mm, I would pack see. this sucker up. Do, do, we, we've got room enough for these guitars, right? True. We do. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll pack. I'll hit that buzzer. Serena, I'm here. I'm out front with a (laughs) U-Haul. Let's go. Let's pack this thing in. So um, the uh, the Marfa lights, that is an example right there. If if you go back uh, throughout history and you look at the old woodcuts and the prints that were made in the 1400s, 1400s, 1500s, of the phenomena that people were seeing, right? Those balls of light rolling mm. up the fields and mm. and their depictions of it, the Nuremberg woodcuts and what's going on. At the, and, and the Chinese turn around and do this experiment. I'm just saying this answers a lot. I mean, what it's happened a phenom- to the ball? What happened to it? Did they say what happened to it? Did it just go out like when they let go of the lighter or did it like, you know, sort of separate and float through anti-gravity? Uh, that, you, know uh, that, how, you know how like when you see uh, asteroids? What if, what if, yeah, 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 yeah. What if, you know, and what, then okay, the water so comes if, out and then there's all the, the water just like floats around and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. What, what would happen and what would happen if like David Copperfield, right? Some magician was on the space station right. and went, you know, started yeah, 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 yeah. Balls what 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 would happen to that? What like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What would happen? <laughs> what would happen? Doug Henning, you know, blowing <laughs> blowing flames. Um, cool. or how about how about uh what what are the fire eaters? What if Maybe you did that? Dragons space. space dragons. Yeah, space dragons. Yeah, that's a good answer. Maybe. That's a good answer. Um, but do you feel that 
it's it, it's tangible now. I, I used to always say that, you know, you can kind of feel it. But, you know, with um, other whistleblowers, I just had uh, Mike Herrera on the show, one of the whistleblowers on the Ooh. show last week. Ooh. And he's pretty incredible, right? He's pretty incredible. Um, of course, David Grush and, and others now um, are coming forward. And I had uh, 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 a few... Others that, are, you know, from the intelligence community, you know, on this show and this prevailing comment, Serena, I know you, you've heard the same thing um, that, uh, you know, it's like, no, it's going to be like in six months. Mm-hmm. And and you start hearing that this this is three, four months ago and you start hearing this over and over again from different. Yeah. You know, these are people that don't know each other. And you hear this repeated enough, but in this community where we are jaded, like is 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 twenty nineteen the year? Is is twenty eighteen the year? Is is you know is nineteen ninety five the year? We've done this every single year, every January first, man. This is it. This is. It. But do you think that well, this is it? Well, this is, this is the thing, right? So lately I've been sort of down this rabbit hole. Since, since I met Steve Bassett, he's introduced me to a lot of people that are from Congress. And, you know, so they're talking about when the government are going to tell us that we're not alone. But um, my career and, like, I guess the investigative journalism that I do um, and the people that I hang out with and spend time with in, in our world aren't – we don't give a shit about the government and their disclosure, you know? Like if they do disclose, great. What we're more focused on is the messages we're already getting from the ETs and what we can do to give the ETs enough comfort um, to com- to make them feel as though they can come here safely without us mowing them all down Independence Day style, you know? Because that's the thing with with these movies, right? And something that maybe people haven't considered is we make all of these negative movies about extraterrestrials. I just watched one a couple of nights ago on Hulu. I think it's something like No One Can Help You or something yeah, like no that. No One Can Save You. No Woo! One Can Save You. Man, that movie was scary as shit. And those extraterrestrials you know, you know gave what? me the fucking willies. Yeah, <laughs> I tell you what, though. Easy screenplay to write. Right. I mean, yeah, no exactly. word. Yeah, words. There's no I think words. there were five words in the whole movie right at the beginning. Were, were there five? Yeah, there's oh, some I, random I guys anything at the beginning. But and the ending, uh, by the way, was terrible. I'm just gonna put it oh, out. Oh, I there. love the ending. Why? When I didn't even understand it. Wait, wait, wait a minute. When they were dancing, like yeah, yeah, stuff. but dancing in the oh, okay. Wow. Spoiler alert, everybody. Oh, wait, uh, no, we should stop. We're talking, we yeah. Stop. We, Let's just but stop with but that. I thought the ending was perfect. I'm going to hop in my car. It's going to take me about 45 minutes to get to your house. When I get there, I'm going to slap you. <laughs> and then I'm just going to go home. Because fuck uh, the hell. But, oh, but anyway, did, did, like, but, but my whole thing with these movies is, has anyone ever considered this? These extraterrestrials have been uh, watching us for a very long period of time. I mean, we're, they're in our hieroglyphics. Okay, they've been coming and visiting us at least as far back as when um, the pyramids were used as tombs. See how I treaded very carefully there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but, you know, they, they know everything that we're doing. I mean, uh, there was a time where we sent out radio signals and um, clips from movies and from songs into space for them to hear. Um, and it's highly likely that they've probably seen these films. They've probably seen these films. They're probably very aware of how the bulk of humanity view them. They probably know we're all scared absolutely shitless of them, you know? Mm-hmm, and I mm-hmm. think that what that's done is that's um, made them, you know, less intrigued to come here because I guess they're probably afraid that something bad's going to happen to them if they do. And so, you know, I'm really hoping that in Hollywood now there there starts to be a shift where they have some alien and extraterrestrial movies that come out that have a more positive narrative because, you know, until humanity understands that they're not coming here to hurt us and they're not coming here to kill us and they're not coming here to rape and pillage our natural resources, I mean, I wouldn't feel safe as an extraterrestrial to come to this planet right now. There's no way. Okay, obviously, 
we shoot first. Right. So I get that part. Right. And you're and and you are right about the alien invasion movies. Um, and we always seem to win with uh, bubble gum and a paper clip. It defeats right. the aliens. Hail right Mary, there. right at the end. Yeah, yeah, the Hail Mary when they have plasma gunships, right? And yeah. and and we are able to anyway. It was rain uh, that killed them. <laughs> uh, but, but what about what about other movies like that new movie with Ben Kingsley, Jewels? Oh my God, I have love you it seen? so much. Oh. Yeah, that that, that yes. was that one. That one tore me up. That's what that we need. We up. need more of those. We need. We need what about E.T.? Did yeah. you did you cry for E.T.? I mean, I had a lot of empathy for E.T., but when he turned white and he was about to die. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh man. Really what, okay, but what about the movie Arrival? Amazing. It's pretty, so, it's pretty solid. So wouldn't E.T. see these movies, too, as well? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's there's a new cool. there's a new organization that's just formed in Hollywood. It's called the Hollywood Disclosure Alliance. It's being he um, headed up by Steve Bassett and Dan Harari, and some of its board members include people like um, Richard Nolan and Danny Sheehan and myself, lots of other um, filmmakers and TV makers in Hollywood. Um, I met one of them the other day, his name's Sean, and he was the guy that made the um, Project Blue Book TV series. And what they're basically doing with the Hollywood Disclosure Alliance is they're bringing all of the most elite uh, writers and filmmakers in Hollywood together um, that are interested in our genre, as well as some of the biggest experts in the ufology world, um, to try and actually change the narrative in Hollywood. So they still create movies that are like super exciting and a little bit terrifying and this, that and the other, but like trying, trying to erase the notion that if they come, it's purely to exterminate us. Wouldn't they? It's too simple of a of a way to put it. But wouldn't they have done that already? Yeah. Why are Why are you and I talking then? Right. This is the biggest thing. So I just finished making a, um, a series called The Abductees where I interviewed a whole heap of um, people that say they've been abducted by ETs. And this is the interesting thing that I took away from it. If I was going to abduct somebody and I didn't care about them and I was going to extract DNA or sperm or God knows what from their body and, you know, put them through a traumatic experience, wouldn't I just kill them? Wouldn't I just take them up in the craft and chuck them out of out of the escape hatch you know why would i bring them back home safely and tuck them into their bed why would i try and remove the memories of the traumatic experience from their mind so that they didn't have to live a life of of fear and terror and ptsd why would i do that if i wanted to harm humanity well answer the question why you know, i i just feel that you know, abduction, whilst it sounds, you know, scary and intrusive, you know, the way that they abduct really proves to me that they don't want to harm us. Yes, they might need something from us, from our bodies. Um, I don't even, I have no idea what, what programs they have going on, if there's like an MK Ultra type of program or they're just trying to analyze our DNA. But the fact that they bring us home safely Tuck us home, tuck us in our beds, don't kill us, don't kidnap us forever and not return us back to our families. That really says something, you know. It, it says that they they want to do as little harm as they can. What about the ones that aren't returned? Ooh, and the, well, okay. So, well, no, well, sort of, kind Ooh. of. Um, missing 411 is a great, great work, David Polites, but um, very, 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 very small, minuscule slice of the pie. Mm. We're talking about a thousandth of a percent because let's take this a step further. The amount of missing people each year, mm. I mean, just in the United States, is is a number that is so big that uh, we have to examine. We're talking about a million people a year mm. in the United States that disappear. Now, a, a part of them 
portion of them disappear themselves. They, they, they want to walk away. Whatever it is, right? They disappear themselves. Some are kidnapped and murdered. Some are, you know, whatever. There, are, you can break that, sli start slicing this right. pie up. But you're suggesting we, from a abducted? We have an unknown section there. And the reason why today I'm more concerned about that than ever before is because we have a digital footprint now. Mm. And it, if you wanted to disappear yourself, and this is the truth, okay? I mean, let me give you an example. If you wanted to disappear yourself, you wanted to leave your wife, right, whatever, in 1950, 1950, 1960, you wanted to just disappear, you just moved to the next town, <laughs> that's it. Yeah. You just, you just move to the next town and get a job. You'll no, no, never no, be no, found. No, no, <laughs> nobody. But right. but today you can't do that. Disappearing today is nearly impossible with the uh, with the digital footprint that that is everywhere. True. And and it, and it's not just social media, Serena, which it's that. It's everything else. It's money and taxes and and credit cards and and CC cameras and uh, front porch ring cam. Whatever it does not matter. Right? <laughs> I mean, There's a digital footprint that covers this planet. You can't just disappear. So how can that many people just go poof? Okay, so let's let's talk about this. Let's spitball. Obviously, I guess what you're suggesting is that some of those could have been abducted by extraterrestrials. Plausible, yes, I agree with you. So what did happen to these folk? I mean, from talking to the people that say that they've been abducted, they say that they're always given a choice. So it's quite, and, and the, you know, like I found a common denominator. I'll, I'll discuss them with you if you're interested. I found three key common denominators with all of the abductees that I that I spoke to. Three things that were exactly the same. But one of them was that they are always given a choice. So they, they're told why they've been taken up into the craft. They've told what their purpose is to the extraterrestrials. And then they're asked if they want to stay. And most of them say no. But, I mean, I, I would say that there are probably a portion that would say yes. I mean, I you know, I have children. So for me, um, hopping off on a spacecraft and buggering off to another planet probably isn't a practical thing right now. But for somebody else um, that, that didn't enjoy their life here on this planet, that didn't have any strong ties, I mean, what a, what a fucking wild ride to be able to go and experience like another world. Sign me up. Yeah, sign me up. Sign me yeah. up, especially if you're older or if you were sick or something like that, sign me up, off, off you go. But then, you know... A lot of us, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of humanity think that there's only like one or two races of extraterrestrials. So there's the greys, which everybody knows about with the big arm and eyes, and then the and, and they're relatively good, we believe. And then there's the reptilians, which are seven foot tall, are basically look like massive scary reptiles, and they're out there to kill you. The, you know, these are the basic narratives that are thrown around. But if you talk to anybody that I guess, is in communication with ETs on a regular basis, they'll tell you that there's thousands of different species out there. And so, unfortunately, it's really hard, I think, for humans to um, know the agenda of the ETs because every agenda is different. Look at our country as an example. Uh, not our country, our planet as an example. Lots of different races, all with different agendas, you know? Like if you had to say what is the human race agenda, you couldn't. No, you couldn't. There's a big difference between the personality of the Dalai Lama mm. and Vladimir Putin. Right. But, but they, they both they both have the same DNA. <laughs> it's like they both you can't have a better example than that, right? You know, Kim Kim Fatty Fat, whatever his name is, uh, in um, Jong Un, in North yeah, in in North Korea. Right, you, you know, you take some Jimmy. <laughs> yeah. Did I say that? Did I? I didn't mean that. I, I don't yes. mean that. Uh, Kim Fatty, <laughs> Kim Fatty, fatter. Yeah, because he he used to be fat, but now he's fatter. Right. Um, it, you know, when you when you think about that, you're exactly right. Uh, you know, there are so many yes. different 
I sets of ideals and moral compasses and agendas, you know, that maybe, drive maybe, this kind you know, of... Like, I think with the greys, because they, they seem to pop up the most with all the stories that I've been told from people, you know, it seems like they are a, a race of extraterrestrial that have an interest in our DNA uh, for multiple reasons. One, to help them and their race to be able to adapt so that we, if they eventually want to come and spend time on our planet, they can, because in their current state, um, their bodies are not made in a way that will allow them to sustain life for any extended period of time on Earth. Just like if we went to the moon and we took our helmets off, we'd be fucked. <laughs> but if we got right, some right. moon critter DNA and put it into our bodies, we'd probably be okay, you know? And I, I believe for what I've been told for the most part is with the greys, they aren't friendly and they aren't mean they just kind of lack empathy so they don't really see the need to be super friendly and loving but they don't see the need to be mean in any way at all they're just very matter of fact I'm here I've, I was given a job this is my job I'm just gonna go do my job extract your DNA blood sperm eggs whatever it is and then I'm gonna put you back in your bed and I'm gonna go home that scares right. me more. If you can't read somebody, right? If you can't read, I, I, need, I need to read somebody. I need right. to know what's going on. And when you They're can't quite expressionless. That, They're quite expressionless. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that bothers me. All right. We're going to be taking a break here in a minute. I do, Before we get to the break, I want to remind everybody, Serena... Uh, is going to be at Stairway to the Stars in Las Vegas, November 10th, 11th, and 12th. She's going to be premiering. Uh, are we going to do this film? Yeah. So we're going to do a screening of We Are Not Alone, and we're going to have a panel. So you'll get to Yeah, meet yeah me. we're going to have a panel. I'm going to... I'm going to host this thing yes. and it's Vegas. So Serena's mouth is going to be out of control right now. She's holding back tonight. She's like, Jimmy, this is a family show. I'm going to keep it clean. But right. in Vegas, Vegas, that's a whole nother. I'm going to be a, hanging out with Paul Heineck and hitting that DNT, bro. Oh, <laughs> <With I'm... laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> no, she didn't. She oh, didn't. yes, I did. She, she didn't just do that. You know, when, oh, when, when sorry, somebody contact in the desert. Mm. Yeah, when somebody, when somebody, um, and you and I have a lot of mutual friends, right? We do. I haven't, I haven't done that yet. I haven't. I I've want to do had, it with him. I, I want to do it with him. That would be cool. That would be cool. I've had so many opportunities, right? Mm. And and when somebody looks at you and that you trust, right, and everything goes, man, you ready? Mm. I back. I, it's just like I chicken out. Yeah. I need to be, it's, I, it's for me, I, I don't chicken out. It's that I need to be in the right space at the right time in the right moment for me. And every time that I've had that, the opportunity, it's just not, it's not right. The timing's off. Yeah, yeah, I know. Like, I mean, if we were in J tree and there was just two or three of us and, and Paul was like, Hey, you want to do this? I probably yep. would do it. I yeah. Yeah. Would. Yeah. Yeah. Paul, 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 Paul may be the right guy to do it with. Paul is the for only sure, guy to do it with. for sure. Paul is, uh, you know, is there on on the level of on on the level of the cool meter at the very top? It's Paul's face, yeah. right? And then, and then Jimmy he, and Paul, he, Jimmy and Paul, you know. Uh, uh, I'm looking up at him, but yeah. that dude, that dude is about as cool right. as it gets. I know. I know. And it's funny too, because when you think of Paul Heineck, you think of um, Jay Allen Heineck and, you know, this hardcore scientist and, you know, stuffy, right? stuffy, and then his nerdy. brother's a scientist and he's written all the books and everything like that. But then you meet him and he's just like rude <laughs> and it's irreverent. Funny. And funny, funny, and funny, funny, and like obsessed with DMT, and like he's the best. Well, here you know, here's the other thing about him. Paul Heineck. I mean, he's the real deal. He's a yeah. professor. He's, you know, he's all of that. But um, you don't know. He okay. He could have been a multiple Oscar-winning actor. Hmm, really? He can play. Yeah. Oh, that he can nervous. play you. You don't know when he's being serious or not. That's and true. you don't. 
That's he true. is so good at and he knows it. Yeah. He knows it. And he knows he knows if he can get to you, right? And, ju- and and play you and wind you up. Yeah. He's going to do it and you don't know, man. You don't Literally know. every time I interview him, he makes up some crazy narrative and everyone in the room knows he's lying except for me and I, I right, become the right. butt That's of what like I- some huge joke. And just as, he's leaving, exactly. just as he's leaving, hours later, he's like, by the way, I was lying. It's like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, I love that guy. I love that guy so much. Um, so let's uh, let's take our quick break right here. The links for uh, Disclosure Fest are below, everybody. So go and get your tickets. And I did uh, mention last week on the show, and this is very important, uh, you've got 10 days. Uh, no, you've got eight days to get your hotel rooms with our discount. And that discount rate is 40%, and you can only get it through the website. It ends on October 10th. So I, everybody's coming to Disclosure Fest. I get that. The hotel room discount. And it's not my – this is – But, Jimmy, it's your conference. You and Adrian, this is your thing, man. Don't you? No, I did that. This I don't have control of. It ends on October 10th. So get your hotel rooms and get your tickets. The links are below. Our guest tonight, the one and only Serena DC. We'll be right back after this short break. Stay with us. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black. Please visit all of our sponsors. We're taking a quick break here. All of the links are below, and we'll be right back. Join us November 10th, 11th, and 12th, 2023, live at the Luxor Hotel and Casino on the Las Vegas Strip. As Disclosure Fest Foundation and Fade to Black Radio presents Stairway to the Stars, a human origins, science, and technology expo. With live talks, lectures, and workshops by world-acclaimed researchers and authors, Featuring topics like human origins, ancient technologies, indigenous teachings, workshops, a mass meditation, yoga and sound healing, music, and so much more. This is Jimmy Church, by the way, and I'll be your host all weekend long. Don't miss our intimate sky watch and meteor shower over the infamous Area 51 airspace in Rachel, Nevada, with special surprise celebrity host guiding us through the night. This event will sell out. For more information and tickets, please visit DisclosureFest.org. Hi, everybody. Jimmy Church here. Very special announcement, and that is we are shipping Fade to Black t-shirts again. It's been almost two years. We did a full upgrade to the website, so you can head over to JimmyChurchRadio.com. It's all simple to do, and it's right there. Remember... We broadcast four nights a week, Monday through Thursday. We bring you the best, the brightest, the most knowledgeable and amazing guests, the best conversations. We do that four nights a week. We also do four days a week. We broadcast the news, and we do that live, too, as well. It's not a one-man show. I do it with website support. I do it with producers. I do it with writers and artists. All contribute to the show. The best way to help support what we do here is with the Fade to Black t-shirt. And you can get your Fade to Black t-shirt one of two ways. First... Go to jimmychurchradio.com, order a shirt. It's really that simple. You're going to get a tracking number, it's going to get shipped, and it's going to get autographed. The second way to get a shirt is with a Game Changer membership. Now, the Game Changer membership not only includes a free t-shirt, but you get a private email to me. You get unlimited commercial free downloads. You have full access to the website, and everything includes includes free shipping and everything is autographed. So help support the show. Get your fade to black t-shirt today. The links are below. You can just go to jimmychurchradio.com and it's right on the website. So there you go. I'm Jimmy Church, fade to black. I'm so excited that I just have one thing to say. Go back Lee Tappy. River Moon Coffee, makers of the Fade to Black blend. Truly the best coffee on planet Earth. 
Just visit rivermoonwellness.com or, or their Amazon store. It's all simple to do. You can check out the Fade to Black blend, the Game Changer blend, or any of their Black Moon Wellness products. It's the only coffee I drink. It is the best, and it's Doc. Again, rivermoonwellness.com. All right, welcome back. Fade to Black, I'm your Jimmy Church, drinking that River Moon coffee. Links are below. It, it 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 is the best coffee in the world. Um, uh, the links are below. River Moon Coffee. Uh, our guest tonight, Serena DC. We are talking about. Well, we're just talking about the UFO subject uh, in general tonight. Her new film it premieres tomorrow. We are not alone. Um, I've got a little little snippet in there. Um, uh, so go go and check it out. Uh, the 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 people that are making uh, the statements that uh, Serena has sat down with extraordinary, extraordinary cast. So uh, everybody just go and, and Bill, get the links up for it and John aside and pop that up in the chat. And you can also go over to uh, Serena's website. The links for that are below the over on social media. We've got them on our website. You can go and do that too. And let's, let's get back to it. Uh, um, Serena, the, the one thing that I don't think that Washington, D.C., the Senate, uh, Congress, the military, and the legal side of this, the one part about all of this, it's one thing to have recovered craft, backwards engineering programs, secret access programs, and, and alien bodies on ice. Okay? All right? It's now part of the fabric of our reality. And we do have to come to terms with that. But the to me, the big one is abductions. Ooh. And how how are they going to deal with that? That is, and I think that there is a legal uh, obstacle in front of in, in front of them as well. And who would be responsible for that if they've known about this for a long time? Uh, do, do you well, agree with that? Yes. The abductor phenomena mean, is. It's a tough pill to swallow. Again, I'm going to bring up Steve Bassett again um, because just because I was filming with him all of last week. So I've got a little Steve Bassett in my head. Um, but, you know, I brought this up with him, this exact thing with him. I said to him, if the ETs all of a sudden landed on the White House lawn or, you know, made themselves known to us and said, hey, we're here and it was this big disclosure and America announces it and there they are on our TVs, right? He believes that it would take us a couple of days but we'd be able to, you know, get over it, get over the massive shock that we're really not alone and um, and then we'd be okay, you know, and then, then we'd process it and we'd be fine. Um, you know, and I tend to agree it might take a few more days I mean, we accepted a global pandemic. We all ended up wearing masks and you know, we kind of survived. I think we can accept that, you know, we're not alone. But these beings allegedly have been abducting us, paralyzing us, taking us through walls, up into craft, extracting our DNA and our blood and our eggs and our sperm and God knows what else, and then returning us back for their own gain, you know, maybe for ours, but, you know, seemingly more so for theirs. How do you forgive that? And, and by the way, I don't take a side here. You know, I'm, I can't wait for contact to happen. It, you know, the good, the bad and the ugly. I think that we're only going to be better for it, you know. Um, so I don't mean, please don't think I'm being negative. I'm not. But, like, it's a, it's a big pill to swallow, you know. It's like if a, um, people from a different country came to our country and they'd been abducting our people, but then they came and they wanted to become friends with us. Do you know what I mean? Wouldn't you just be I like, do. Yeah, that's great. We'd love to be friends. But you took, you know, hundreds of our people against their will and took all their shit out of their bodies without asking and caused all of this PTSD and all of this trauma. Like, how do we get past that? If you, if you, I, I don't know. I don't know. And, 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 and how do you get past that? Like I said, there's like this legal side of it where I could almost see some dark smoky room in DC, right? With all mm. those scary dudes sitting around some table talking about this. Yeah. Okay. 
let's do this. Psychopathic but we're not going to talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not going to. We're not going to do abductions. We can do everything else. We can cover our tracks, but we right. can't. That's the that's the zone we're not going into. Right. And what I about can, justice? Can, what about justice well, for all the people that got? You know, like if I was abducted by a human, I would I would demand justice. You know, I would want that person to be caught and put in jail. Right. So. Now, if you took I'd a like poll, to about that. okay, so if we took a poll, maybe I should uh, have uh, somebody put this up in my Twitter feed, uh, or maybe we could do a poll. I, I don't know how to, I, I, I just do the show. The other people know how to do it. polls. But, but, but what if we did a poll? And the poll was, if you were abducted, would you do it again? Ooh. Right, right. Now, now there, I there are a, lot, you know what I mean? Because if if, well, I've if been asking, take, I've been asking all these abductees. I've been asking them that that exact question. That's my what, last what question for every I'm interview. Waiting. It's like if you had a choice, what what would you choose? It's fifty fifty. It's divided. You know, like Whitley right. Strieber. Whitley Strieber. Um, if anyone's watched the movie Communion, his, he describes his abduction as a rape. You know, he looked me in the eyes when I was giggling about him being probed anally and he said I was raped, Serena, and that hit home for me so hard because, you know, so many people around the, the world for, for years, for, you know, 30, 40 years since that movie came out, have giggled about being probed, you know, by aliens. But guess what? That's not how he saw it. He was raped. He said it took him nearly 20 years to recover um, bowel movement, like to have bowel movements that were normal again and that he still struggles and he was injured so badly inside that it, it's something that stayed with him forever. Yet he says he wouldn't change it for the world. And he's so glad. Uh, well, that, that the jur- the ju- yeah, I know. The maybe journey, the probing, right? but, you know, that experience. But he, he would never, right, and he's, right. he's in constant contact with the ETs now. He finds them a bit scary. He finds them intimidating. But it, what he gets from them, the knowledge about life and, and the universe is invaluable to him. And so he, he says, yes, he would definitely do it again. But then there's another case. And, guys, if you want to see a really interesting case, look up a woman named Kim Carlsberg. So Kim no, she's Carlsberg. She's great. Kim's amazing. You know, she's she, going to be, was, she's going to be, she's going to be at stairway. She's going to be at stairway to the stars. I just uh, had her on the she show. Doing a talk? If she's doing a talk, go yeah, to yeah. the talk. If she's yeah, going yeah. go and buy the book, she's like the goat. I don't know why there's not more done about her, but she actually um, was one of the creators of Baywatch. She used to mm-hmm. live in Malibu on the beach and she had her first um, UFO encounter on the beach over looking over Malibu. Um, she was abducted many times. And when I asked her that question, I said to her, I said at the end of the interview, so if I'm lying in bed and I wake up and I see the same extraterrestrial looking at me as you saw looking at you, what advice would you have for me? You know, how, what what should I do? And you know what she said? She looked me dead in the eye and she goes, Serena, run. So it's interesting the, the difference in perspective that people gain from this. In her situation, her life was not better for the abduction experience and she has a lot of rage, anger toward the extraterrestrials, whereas Whitley, even though it was very traumatic, um is he's deeply grateful for it it's it's a tough one you know different species doing different things to different people uh, there's just so many different perspectives well you know, look at if we uh even even travis walton Ooh. who was uh uh I, I mean i can only imagine uh you know we're talking about traumatic we're talking about real Ooh. trauma here right oh, and so you go through that but even uh you know travis today um and he has said this on the show a, a few times he says you know i'm not so sure that they meant to hurt me i think that they tried to heal me that they knew that they injured yeah that they injured him and that's the way he walked away from that experience but then if you go back to like betty and barney hill barney was traumatized and he uh there was a before and after uh to barney hill 
and you talk to those uh, that knew him and uh, and and, and that, that saw the change mm. because his their relationship, when you go back to 1960, when you're dealing with, you know, massive amounts of racism and segregation and desegregation wasn't even a word yet, right? Everything was still segregated. And the riots that happened across this country after their abduction, they were a very unique couple. They were a biracial couple mm. in 1960 in the United States. That's a rare. So you are already dealing with the emotional daily life of being in a marriage like that in, in, in America. So emotionally you're dealing with that. And, you know, they were a great couple. They were amazing. They were just amazing people. Then they have this experience uh, happen to them. And I think that ultimately it was too much, Ooh. you know, uh, for Barney, Betty, uh, dealt with it in in her own terms, but but Barney didn't, and and it changed him. And I don't think Barney would have signed up for trip number two. But, Betty, I think she would have, right? I think Betty yeah, would have said, "Well, well you, know, you know, it's interesting that you bring them up because you know I haven't thought of, thought about them for a while." Um, but, you know, I've met a few couples that have had this shared abduction experience. And, you know, one was Bob Silas and his wife. And it was interesting when Caroline was regressing Bob, he was, his wife was just off camera. She didn't want to be on camera that day. And, um, and they both had an experience at the same time. He was sort of like optimistic about it and, you know, I guess fascinated that he would be, have his sperm taken and what did they want? You know, he, he was coming, he was quite philosophical would be the word I would use. She was sitting behind the camera scowling, you know, like every, every word that would come out of his mouth as he was remembering what had happened, it was making her so angry and so mad and like filling her with rage, you know. And so after the interview, I asked her what she was feeling and, and she had this weird phenomena happen where she gets these scratches all over her arms. So the first time that it happened, and you can look, Google Google um, Bob Silas's wife and you'll see these images, these scratches on her arms, like, you know, deep welts almost. And um, she says that every now and then they appear again. And so we asked um, when he was in regression, are they why are these lines appearing again? Because she's not remembering any more abductions. But they say they that what he said in the regression was they're appearing because she fights back so he seems to go willingly when they come but she seems to fight back there's there must be something within her dna that makes her more immune to the um, drugs or hormones or whatever it is that um, they put into the air that makes the the human docile you know while bob's lying there like <laughs> drooling mm -hmm. take me to your leader you know his mm -hmm. wife's there like get the fuck off me sorry mm -hmm. i gotta stop swearing <laughs> get off mm -hmm. me get off me you know um and so i found that really interesting the same experience but two very different different accounts and you're saying that was the same with uh betty and well and, and 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 look if it, yes and if we um everybody brings up uh, Stephen Greer, when we talk about this benevolent uh, interaction, and uh, it, it, and, it, and 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 he he's pretty steadfast, right? Mm -hmm. He will hold his ground there. All right, that's fine. Um, but there, I don't think that there is any way uh, that that is a shared experience. There are too many other abductees and those that have had some very, 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 very bad experiences. And they will say, look, being taken against your will, uh, no matter what is not a good experience. So no, don't tell me that they have the best of intentions. Mm. And then, and then, and then, okay. So that does that uh, throw water on, on Greer's fire? kind of does in a way but then again well, i have to be pragmatic here isn't it just perception like he doesn't nor he doesn't have the answers neither does anybody else hmm. right none of us do we haven't sat down until i have et on fade to black 
right? And I'm right. able to sit and ask questions. Uh, we we don't have those answers. Right. We simply don't. And, and, now, can and, I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question, please? Sure. When the interviewee becomes the interviewer for like 10 Flip seconds. Flip this thing. Flip this thing. <laughs> right. So, um, oh, no, because I'm genuinely interested, my darling friend. What would you, like, you know, like you, you're very similar to me. We've seen a lot of UFO and we've seen orbs and we've seen weird stuff we cannot explain. But neither of us have had an extraterrestrial in our bedroom and, well, that we know of. And I have. I have. Oh, Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, tell me the story then. I did not know this. Well, I, I've talked about this on the air many, 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 many times. So I'm going to give you the short version of it. And and the second thing, uh, as as I reveal this to you, because you've heard it for the first time, others have heard it uh, before, but okay. I don't get into details. And the reason why I don't get into details is because I have a large audience and I don't want to contaminate others' experiences, okay? Mm -hmm. So when I interview people, I know my, you know, I, you know, and I'll, I want to listen for similarities. I want to, okay. I don't tell anybody what those are, but it, it confirms my, it helps confirm my own experience, but it also confirms and validates somebody else's story that they're telling me. Mm. Okay. But so this is what happened. I'll make this very, this is a quick version of the story. Um, 1995. Um, I'm living alone. Okay. Living alone in Sherman Oaks. And um, uh, I'm asleep and it's two 15 in the morning and I hear something in my room, in my bedroom. And this is a, a, a condo that I'm renting. Okay, so it's decent size, two bedrooms, two bath, living room, dining room, kitchen, right? And I'm all the way on the far end in, in my bedroom, right? But I know, I know the sound of my place. And I heard something. And I wake up, and it sounded like somebody was moving stuff in, in my room. Now, I thought at that moment I, I was being burgled, right? I had somebody in my house that was robbing me and going through my stuff. So I, I lay there for a second, and, and then I look, uh, and I'm on my back. And I look, I, I don't want to move because I don't know what's going on. But I look down at my feet and, okay, so at the foot of my bed is a TV. On both sides of the TV are speakers on stands. And then to the right, if I'm facing the TV, looking down at my feet, to the right of that, sliding glass doors with blinds in front of it, white blinds which are open. And so the sun, the moonlight's coming in and my room is fairly lit up. Okay. All right. I can see everything. And standing in front of the sliding glass doors off to my right is a dude. And I was like, what? And so now, and, and so I, at that moment, now, this is where I'm just going to advance this story and end it. I'm planning on Bruce Lee, right? I'm going to spring to action. I'm going to karate chop this dude in the neck. What? Right. Yeah, exactly. Grasshopper. And, right. and, and so I'm planning my move, right? To, to, and this goes on. And then, and then I realize at that moment that, like, I am not moving, I can move my eyes. I can do that. And this goes on for about 10 minutes. I'm looking at him in his eyeballs. Okay? Right? Is this like a and, gray? And then, like and kind of I, I'm, not, I'm not saying anything. Oh, okay. okay. I'm not saying anything. Okay. So then I, I could move my toe. 
And I sleep with my feet out of the blankets. I don't sleep with my feet under the blankets. I got that's that's my own thing. But anyway, Me too. I went, okay, I can move my toe, but I don't want him to see that. But I'm like, okay, okay, I'm good. I can move. Okay, all right. On the count of three, Jimmy, turn on the lamp to your left, and then karate chop, drop kick to the right. That's the plan. Mm. And I jump up and I turn on the lamp and I jump to the right, and dude is gone, vanished. And and I was like, what? So I thought that in that split second that I did this, that he ran, either went out of the sliding glass door or he ran past me and out the bedroom door into the condo. Mm-hmm. So I think I've got somebody in the house. So now I get up. I walk, I'm, the lights are on. I go over to the sliding glass door. It is locked. It's locked from the inside. Went, okay, I'm tiptoeing, right? So I creep over, I turn on the bathroom light, and then I go out of there, I turn on the light to my daughter's bedroom. She wasn't there. Um, that turns on, I turn on the other bathroom. I'm going through the con, right? And I I come out into the living room, I'm turning on light, there's nobody there. I check all the doors. I've got three sets of sliding glass doors, everything's locked. Front door is locked from the inside, and there's nobody there. So I walk back in to my bedroom. This is the end of the story. I walk into my bedroom. I look out of the sliding glass door and I look up and I went flying saucer because I thought it was a, a home invasion robbery. Hmm. Right Up until that point, you really uh, thought. Yeah. And then, yeah. and then, but everything's locked from the inside and now I'm kind of tripping out. And I did. So I walked over and I and I thought to myself, did anybody else see if that what that this is a city, you know, it's Sherman Oaks. It's, this isn't out in the country. Right. Right. This is Sherman Oaks. This is feeling really weird to me. Um and now I for the next 10 years, 10 years, I slept with the lights on and the TV in the whole house, the whole house was lit up like a Christmas tree and the TV was on. And I didn't tell anybody, which is crazy because you, I didn't tell a single, so I didn't tell a single soul. I didn't, you know, and I talked to, I started coming out a little bit, you know, with a few of my friends kind of testing the waters a little bit, um, sharing this experience. But no, I kept it to myself until Fade to Black. Mm. I I told the whole story on Fade to Black 10 years ago. And so, yeah. Now, that is okay. okay, So let's go back to Salas's regression, right? So I I tell the story on Fade to Black, word gets out, and every therapist, you know, I've interviewed all all of the, you know, I've done hundreds of therapist interviews. Mm. Got lots of friends that are therapists. Uh, Caroline Corey is a great example, right? And and on and on and on and on. I, I know them all. And they've all, excuse me, they've all said the same thing. So, Jimmy, let's do a session. Mm. I'm like, nope, 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 nope. Don't want to know. Don't want to really? know. Really? Because, like, I really no. want to know. No. Does part of you think now that potentially you woke up at the end of an experience? See, see, I I, I don't want to unpack it. Mm. I don't want to unpack it. There are, there are, because I'm good with the way it is. I can relate. I can relate. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good with that version of the experience. I I, I don't want, uh, I don't want to know. Now, so it's been nothing but a series of no's uh, with regressions. Now I'm talking because you asked the question and I'm, I'm rambling about this, but I am, I'm going to do a session with Sarah Breskman Cosme. Yeah. Yeah. So That's we're going to so do, great. we're going to do, she's amazing. You're going to do it. In and, uh, and uh, no, she's in Ibiza, right? She flew to Ibiza. You know what? So check this out. 
She just texted me a picture uh, right before showtime. Oh, I can't show it to you. It wouldn't be Did cool. they tell no, you right. hello last week? Caroline and Sarah said they were coming in, and I was just like, what? Because if I was yeah. there, I would have been like Jimmy's Angels. Uh, yeah, I know, He's right? Alive, all right? three, all three, all three. And I, I, you're right. It would be blonde, redhead, and brunette. It would yeah. be Jimmy's yeah, Angels. Yeah, it would be Jimmy's so Angels. Anyway, <laughs> so anyway, um, uh, but uh, there are certain parameters I'm lining up for this, and um, I, well, I've I, watched her I, do a lot. Like I've watched her do a lot of regressions, and she probably she's, is really she's amazing. Different. Yeah, Caroline too. Like they do it really, really differently, extremely differently. Because I find that with Sarah, she goes into life after life after life after life. So you'll probably learn so much from her about like your path, like your your entire soul's path and existence. Whereas with Caroline, when you watch her do it, she kind of. Um, she kind of goes to another place as well. You know, normally like your therapist is there for you and you're the one that's sort of telling them what you can see and what you can think and feel. Caroline is kind of like, well, thank you for telling me what, what you saw. This is what I saw. And she tells you all this other stuff. So, you know, I think it'd be amazing for you to do it with both of them. I think. Well, you together. know, so, you know, there's so many um, uh, great therapists out there, and they all have their mm. own style. Um, and I have, uh, you know, I've watched uh, Sarah uh, do a session, and the way that she approaches it, I'm. It's not that well. Comfort and trust is uh, is paramount here for sure. Mm. But she's got she's got her own thing going on. And what what I enjoy about Sarah's approach, and I'm not everybody's got their own way of doing it. So that that's fine. Um, but Sarah's thing is she's also learning. Right at the same time, she's inquisitive. And and so it's like she's at the library, you know, checking out books and, you know, researching it. She's she's got that kind of mind yeah, uh, going on. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I did one with her recently, probably. Did you really? With I Sarah? Did. Yeah, with Sarah, maybe uh -huh. like three months ago. And like, I don't I didn't really know what to expect because I'm like, I'm very similar to you. Do you actually, do you want to, do you want to hear my story? My alien in the bedroom story? Yeah, I do. Okay. So mm, sort of kind of similar to you. So I was filming this movie called beyond the grave, which was about the afterlife and one of, and, and I was filming it in a hotel room and I was staying at the hotel, uh, the Chamberlain in West Hollywood. If you ever want to go somewhere where ETs visit anyway, so I'm, I'm in the, in the room with her and we've got a big crew there and we're filming. And it, I was filming with this woman called um, Ellen Wheaton. And what she's able to do is unlock blockages in you. You know, she's a spiritual mm -hmm. healer. I look all these blockages. She she was an NDE. She had died, been given these magical gifts on the other side and then come back. Anyway, so just before we started, she said, so do you want me to help you with anything? And I'm like, yeah, you know, like I'm really afraid of ETs. I make all of these documentaries about UFOs and stuff like that, but I'm so shit scared of coming face to face with an ET. So she's like, okay, well, let's unlock that. So I just sat there and she kind of did some weird hand movements and said some weird shit. And I was just like, okay, great. Went on with the west, rest of my day filming, every, you know, blah, 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 great day. Everyone went home. So then, um, like, I don't smoke cigarettes very often unless I'm with you, Jimmy Church, and we've had a couple. I, then maybe I, don't, I don't smoke. What are you talking about? Your disco cigarette after several beers. <laughs> But, um, uh, but anyway, so I'm staying in this hotel room, which was very uncompromised. Nobody had smoked in there. And I fall asleep and I wake up to the sound of the carbon monoxide alarm going off. And they're, they're only triggered by people smoking cigarettes and blowing it into the, the alarm. So this thing's going off like crazy. And I'm like, what the hell? And, I, and I'm like, what is going on? And I try and move so I can get up so I can deal with the situation, but I can't move. I'm literally paralyzed, pinned to the bed. So I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, okay, well, maybe I'm having like a hypnagogic dream or something like that, sleep paralysis. And I'm like, I can't move, I can't move, this alarm's going off. And then all of a sudden it hits me and I'm like, what if I'm getting, like being abducted? 
The second I thought it, I started to feel myself being trying to be lifted out of the bed. So this feeling from my toes up my legs, on my torso, all the way on my arms to my head, this feeling of being lifted like this, every fiber of my body being pulled, like lifted out of the bed. And I'm lying there pushing down on the bed as hard as I can because I'm thinking, I ain't going nowhere. I'm pushing and I'm pushing. And then I say in my mind, and this is only because I've done CE5 and I know people that say you communicate using telepathy. In my mind, I say, are you trying to abduct me? Are you trying to take me? And I hear this voice saying, yes. And I said, are you going to bring me back? And the voice says, no. And then, so I say, well, I'm not going to go. I've got kids. There's no way. Like, if you can't bring me back, I'm not going to go. And they're like, but we need to take you. And I said it again. I'm like, if you, if, are you going to bring me back? And they said, no. And I'm like, well, I'm not going. And then I just said it in my head a million times. I'm not going. I'm not going. I'm not going. I'm not going. Then all of a sudden, like that, I could move. The alarm goes off and I look over at my clock and it has 222 on it. And I don't know much about numbers and numerology and any of that sort of stuff, but it was just the weirdest, freakiest experience I've ever had. And 50% of me, the normal, rational, logical side says, okay, it was literally a hypnagogic dream. Mm -hmm. Then the other half says, no, it wasn't. And I don't want to know <laughs> if it was Where do you think the voice, where, uh, where do you think the voice came from? It's not the, it's not the only time I've heard it. So if you watch that movie, The Martha Lights, the one that you're in, um, me and Adam Curry, at, so for those of you that don't know, Adam M. M. Curry is a consciousness expert, a tele telepathy expert, and he's had a lot of experience communicating with ETs. And this guy is a, fr is a freaking genius. You know, he's not a crazy yes, he person. Is. He's incredible, you know. And both him and I did a meditation when we were in Marfa, Texas, and both of us had a shared experience where he heard voices in his head that were extraterrestrial talking to him, and I heard the same voices, and they said exactly the same thing with the same tone of voice. It was really weird. Um, so it's the second time I've heard it, but what does it sound like? Literally like someone talking to you, clear as a bell, clear as day in your head, not fuzzy, not obscured, um, just another voice. And for me, it's always a male. So, and I feel like it's always a male because then I won't confuse it with me. You know how you've got your own little dialogue going on in your head. Um so maybe I'm going insane. Well, or, and, and, and did, now did Happened. did you smell? Did you smell cigarette smoke? Nothing. And I googled it. I did a little bit of research afterward. Not that much, but there has been a correlation between abduction and um, the r levels of carbon monoxide changing in a room. Um, I guess because of like energy and and all of those sorts of things, but. All I can say is that when I've described how it felt to be pulled from the paralyzed but being pulled from the bed, the way I describe it to people that have been abducted, they, they're like, well, that's what was going on. That's what was happening. But like you, Jimmy, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. I don't want to find out because I feel like if I know for sure, it just opens up this whole other world of PTSD and trauma that I'm not ready to deal with. There's okay. there's that part, and then we wow. have we we have the historical part of this too as well, where this is not we're treating this today, uh, not you and I, but just like in general, that this is some modern phenomenon, and clearly it is not. Mm. There there have been story. After story, mm. after story, historically documented versions of this going back for f at least 5,000 years. And if you look at not only the Egyptian text and the Sumerian text or you, uh, 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 India, and you, you go back and you, the Bible, let's bring that up, Man. right? Well, well, you know, so the, when, when. Uh, we hear about these conversations and you look at the Egyptian book of the dead, or you look at the Sumerian text, and look, man, it doesn't matter. Even uh, Hinduism, look at, look at Buddhism. 
right? It doesn't really matter. Go and look at all of these texts mm -hmm. and the way that it's represented. Um, this is not something modern. This has been talked about for you. How many times? You, do you want to talk about the resurrection? Really? Right. You really want to, you Ooh, want to talk about the resurrection? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, and, and so, no, I don't think that you can't say, and, and, and think about the billions of people on this planet that, uh, and that's fine. I, I'm not poo-pooing on anybody's beliefs or religions or anything like that, but there are billions of people on this planet that believe that Jesus rose from the dead and disappeared out of a cave, right? And then came back three days later and said, look at me, I'm fine. Mm. And you're going to tell me that Travis Walton is making it up? You can't have it both ways. You can't, have, it, it just doesn't work that way in my world. And that also goes back to uh, all of, not all, but a lot of what the, the Egyptians wrote about or the Sumerian text. And uh, man, if you go today, uh, Serena, this is nuts to me. It's like 1% of the Indian texts have been translated hmm. and transcribed. They're, those books are just sitting on shelves. Yeah. Right. Millions of pages that nobody has had the time to get to. They're working on it. It's right. So but you know what I mean? We we, we only understand or, or know a little bit. The same thing with the Sumerian text. Mm. Same thing with the Egyptian text. Mm. You know, I'm I'm going to be I'm going to be walking around Egypt uh, this week. And the phenomenon to me uh, about that. It's not what we know about Egypt. It's what we don't know. Totally. So much of it is, it, you know, so much of it has yet to be discovered. How many more, you know, how much of it is under the sand that that is just waiting yes. to be, to be read? The same it's thing with there. The, it's all there. It's all yeah. there. Gobekli you know? Tepe's, you know, uh, Iraq, India. You know, I, China won't tell us what they have. <laughs> you know well, I mean? they've got all of those pyramids that are just like under they the grass, they, just hiding in plain sight. Hiding, hiding it, hiding it. And right. so, yeah, yeah, that's the part where uh, the abduction phenomenon, Betty and Barty Hill and Travis Walton and, and Whitley Strieber is like this is some modern thing. It isn't. It's been going right. on forever. Right. And, you know, and one thing that I think is undeniable about that is when you read the accounts of these abductions, whether they be 2023, 1960, or um, the year 1100, right, they all describe things in a similar way. They all talk about paralysis. Even when you look at the Egyptian hieroglyphics, the way that the bodies move into the craft isn't ascending like this. They're, they're lying down, you know, mm -hmm. and they're being... Yes taken up they be you know and it's exactly the same way as it's described now you know they disable our ability to thrash around and hurt them and hurt ourselves they take us into their craft they keep us docile mentally and physically so that we don't hurt ourselves or hurt them they do what they need and then they bring us back and it's, it's just been the same thing over and over and over and over again. And quite often, though, one, one, one benefit, if you could call it that, to abduction, just like with Travis Walton, is a lot of the um, people that are abducted when they do go up there, if they are sick, they're healed which I think is, is kind of interesting. It's almost like, you know, we can't erase what we've done, but we can give you something. You know, now, what do you make of, uh, we've just got a little bit of time left, a great conversation, uh, by the way. Um, everybody, come to Stairway to the Stars and, and meet Serena because mm -hmm. she is just like who you think she is. Trust mm -hmm. me. And uh, uh, j just go, come grab me and I'll introduce you to her if you're chicken. You but, literally um, will do that. That's, that's it, how he rolls. <laughs> but it, what if, you know what Serena does when she's with me? Jimmy. I want to meet them. She has me take her around. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> and 
just like, oh, man, you know what so Jimmy does when I'm around? He stops in hallways and takes selfies with his fans, and it's so. And he'll like they'll be taking photos, and then he will he goes give Serena the camera. So now I'm like this impromptu. Oh, photographer going, well, but you know you know how to frame. See, you Say know how to frame. You know, <laughs> you know how to frame. Um, what do you make of uh, that? You know, because we have David Grush and we have these other whistleblowers coming forward. We have this action that is happening, and I get all of that. And then flip all of this over, and these Peruvian mummies um, that that uh, have resurfaced because the original version of the story happened back in 2017 that that I was involved in. Um, I recently got an email, emails, plural, uh, that I was exposed to this from them, uh, not Gaia, from uh, the team down there um, in 2016. I don't remember, I don't remember that, but uh, I don't know, selective memory. But the point being, the the story is back, right? And and the mummies are back. Right. The the what do you make of the the Navy, the Mexican Navy, and their head surgeon? They they went back uh, that, not last week, the week before. They re-examined the mummies, right? right? And they did another press conference, and they showed the video of them doing the CT scans and doing another set of x-rays, and they make another announcement that these bodies are whole and intact. They're not pieces and parts that were put together. What you see is what you get. Yeah. Is that is that another part of disclosure? Is this another part of... Is, is this what we need to start preparing ourselves for? Because, I mean, they, you know, the timing seems suspect to me. I think the whole thing is just really confusing. You know, uh, we've been talking about him a lot tonight. This is the Bob's, Bob Salas show. But, uh, I, like, I was with him a few days ago and he had been there. So he was actually there at Congress when they, uh, for the first hearing, when they showed the showed the mummies for the first time and he took photos of them. He was up close and personal with them. And he said that when he saw their fingers, it gave him chills because he had an instant flashback. Like in that moment, he was like, I've seen those fingers before. And he looked at his wife and she looked at her scratches and that was a whole terrible moment that, that happened for them. You know, but in his mind that, you know, they're bona fide and they're real. I mean, how is disclosure supposed to happen when you're being told by military officials and the government that these bodies are real, that they haven't been made up by meat that's been derived from other animals and thrown together in some, like, macabre alien puzzle? Like, if you're not believing it, then, you know, what's it going to take? If the U.S. government suddenly said, hey, here's some, like, you know, footage from the 1950s of the extraterrestrials that we got from Roswell and here's their bodies. Like, how are we going to react to that? You know, do we trust our government enough to just blindly believe what they say? So when they say these are extraterrestrials, we're like, oh, great, we're not alone. Do, do the Mexican people not trust their government enough to believe them? Right. Yes, yes, like, yes, 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 yes. That is such a great point. And and then and here, you know, again, I, I I'd like to flip things around. So let's flip it over for a second, where we are being so desensitized, not not only to the ET issue, but on what we can believe and trust with our eyes and our ears, right. because today with deep fakes and technology and AI stuff so we are going to have to spend so much of our discernment uh play time into trying to figure out what is real and what is not tom hanks right tom hanks of all you know posts on instagram yesterday that some dental company is advertising a dental plan with an ai version of him hmm. in this commercial he didn't shoot the commercial. It's not him, the advertisement. He's not endorsing anything. Wow. But the point is, now he's got to come out and defend himself and say that that's not me. 
Well, we're going to have to do that constantly from this moment forward. Right. You know, and it's you know, and it's not just Tom Hanks in a dental plan, right? Or the Kardashians. Yeah, remember that time when we thought Donald Trump was the president, but really it was like a reptilian, like doing some like trippy. Well, AI it's thing? A, but like that, what, right? what, is, what are we going to do with that? Where yeah, exactly. you know some deep fake comes out. I remember. Um, I'm going to back up. This is probably it was when Barack Obama was president. Okay, so I don't know how many years. I don't even remember when he was president now. It seems like so long ago. But it was when Barack was president. And there's this video footage, and you can go and find it, of Barack at uh, some gathering. Maybe it's a press conference. Maybe it's, I I don't know what it is. but, But in the background, you see his, one of his Secret Service agents and this is this is before deep fakes, right? Ricky, I've seen the original footage. I've seen it. You see him shape shift into a reptilian, and it's, so you watch that. Now, the, hey, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. The, now, now I don't know if it's some digital artifact, and it was just the way that it looked. That part doesn't matter. The footage itself is real. Wow. Did he was it was it shape shifting? I don't know. It's 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 a pretty amazing now. But what are you going to? What's the world going to do when this is now created and presented as real, mm. and we see a politician or a religious leader or just Joe next door? Doesn't even have to be that shape shift, and it is and that you can't tell the difference. And, and we have to use discernment now on everything. That, and that's where we're at. I kind of like, I, re- I really believe that, you know, co- COVID, I hate talking about COVID. Fucking COVID was a nightmare. But COVID was interesting because when it, when it first happened and we were all locked in our houses and, you know, freaking out and we've never lived through a pandemic before, you know, like, like us, we never have. Um, you know, and it seemed like the world was ending and but we we just all pulled together and we all figured it out you know like the whole world even though it was a, a clusterfuck like we we got through it right and um we survived we thrived we beat it i guess and i think that that that's what gives me faith to believe that the world will be okay when the extraterrestrials arrive you know like it'll be a shock but we'll deal with it you know, I think, and I think it will finally bring us together in in some way because, in the most negative sense, it would be us against them. You know. Well, it it we are so. And that's what I'm talking about. About uh, you know, getting us so desensitized to it, uh, to anything, desensitized to anything. Mm. So you know, the world, the the worst hurricane ever in the history of everything is about to hit the East coast, right? It's not a category five, it's a category 10. Mm-hmm. And, and so we're going to get the bill, the thing and the drama, and then, and then, then it hits. And then, if, 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 and then, you know what? The next day is another headline. Right. The and biggest ever. Right. And, and it's just like, well, do, do you just, do you know what happened? Do you remember two days ago? Right. And it's like that we're desensitized uh, to everything. So I'm excited uh, for it. I think we all need need to be shaken up a bit. I don't know about you guys out there watching this, but like I find life to be a, a little bit boring at times and highly monotonous. And I mean, it's been the same goddamn story playing over and over and over and over and over again for years. Like it's about time something cool and exciting happened, you know, come what may, as long as it's not Independence Day style. I mean, there'll be an adjustment period, but I think we'll be all the better for it. And I mean, if they can share our technology for us and all of a sudden, instead of holidaying in Bali, we're holidaying in, you know, um, Maya in the Pallades constellation, then like bring it on. Well, uh, okay, so uh, last week, might have been two weeks ago, last week, two weeks ago, the James Webb Space Telescope discovers plankton mm. on another planet, right? Mm-hmm. Now, now I say plankton loosely before everybody goes, they didn't discover plankton. Okay, so the statement was 
they discovered Life. A carbon uh, right. dioxide that only comes on this planet, a version of it, you know, uh, a, uh, a, a gas, only comes from plankton. Okay. All right. So that's that's what I'm saying. But to suggest that this compound is in the atmosphere on an exoplanet, it can only come from one thing, something living in the ocean, right? Now, the question, you know, plankton, flora or fauna? Mm. A big debate. But that doesn't even matter. So that that announcement comes out. And it's like, to me, that's one of the biggest announcements in, in the history of the world. Right. And it just came and went. Like water like, on Mars. Yeah. Water on Mars. Yeah. Water on Mars, you know, not that would trace, be big not news. evidence that used to have water. Water. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's news for like three minutes. Right, but guess that's what? For... Kanye West's girlfriend likes wearing tops that are really revealing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's big Let's news. Talk about that, that every day. That that'll that, that'll stay in the news cycle for twenty four hours. Mm -hmm. Is for, for sure. Her? You know, <laughs> it, it, oh, it's the crazy on an exoplanet. <laughs> I know, right? So you know they you know they you know the announcements about uh, you know life on Europa, and that was last week. The week before it was you know plankton, and and now it's it's Europa, which we've always suspected of mm -hmm. of this uh, for a long time. But that's a moon of Jupiter. This isn't like you know a hundred light years away or fifty light years away. This is literally in our backyard. Yeah, solar system, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that that's that's probably uh that's probably how it's going to happen first. You know, they they have to announce it that way. If, if, if short of, you know, something landing on the 405 and the 101 and blocking traffic. Um short of that, the announcement would probably be we found life on Europa. We found signs of life on an on an exoplanet. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're going to do it that way first and then unroll it. But I don't know. Maybe maybe we've got something else bigger in the next uh, two or three months, apparently. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's the cool thing about, about all of this. It's like, you know, the mystery and the wonder. And, like, we have absolutely no idea when things are going to happen. It's like the biggest cosmic surprise ever. <laughs> I just hope Why? I'm still alive when it happens. Well, you know how you know how I'm dealing with it now. I swear, mm. I swear, I, I everything that is holy. This is what I do. Mm. I wake up in the morning, right? Put my feet on the ground, swing out of bed, put my feet on the ground, pick up my phone, and I look for the ET is here headline. Wow. I'm like that. I'm like well, that. Ready, now. That, like, yeah, oh I, I think God. it's I think that's where we're at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would not surprise me. It's like I'm in that kind of countdown mode. I really am. So well, do you think do you think before we go, do you think it will be government disclosure that will be that headline? Or do, will it be, oh my God, a UFO just landed on the 405 and everyone? No, that's not how it's it. that's not how it's gonna go down. Mm -mm. It's going to be Serena DC live streaming on Instagram, going into a hangar at Lockheed right. Skunk Works, and you're going to be, you're going to do the big reveal. You you know you're going to be walking very in. Cool. And he's very shy, and he's <laughs> that, Plato. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's how it's going to go down. That's how it's going to go down. That's how it's going to go down. It's going to be Serena DC. Would you would you do would, okay? Let's say, do you roll those dice? Let's say Michael Mazzola calls you up, and yeah. you know how he does it. So Serena, check this out. I got a guy that knows a guy, and and we're gonna go to this hangar out in the desert, and we want to live stream it mm -hmm. on your YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. He's had that conversation with you, but let's mm -hmm. say I know he already has. Mm -hmm. um, but let's say he, do you sign up for that? Do you yes. go ahead and? and Yes. Feel the fear and do it anyway, man. A hundred percent. But I'm not going alone. <laughs> no, no. You know you what? First. I'll, I'll <laughs> you go. Know? I'll, I'll go. 
But go you guys go. You guys go in first. I'm going to be outside. You guys Facetime me. I'll be outside watching yeah. it on 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 Facebook. Yeah, when we don't die, you'll be like, okay, well, maybe I'll. Hey, die. Okay, <laughs> now I'll go in with my flashlight. Nice, <laughs> Serena. You are the absolute very best. I can't wait to uh, to get back from Egypt so we can go hang out in Las Vegas together. It's going to be amazing. It's come, you know. Check this out. It's a month away. I know. A month. A, a month. A month. A month away. We're going to be in Las Vegas. I can't Jenny, wait. Can you do me a favor? Can you please stay safe? I know you're like such a big adventurer, going in those bloody, really tight spaces. Like, please, just like wear a little helmet and don't overdo things. I know you're on this quest to find the riddles of the universe, but promise me, pinky swear. Okay. All right. All right. I did. I did. We. I just did it. Okay. Okay. Good. Be safe. Be safe. Have fun while I'm gone, and I'll see you when I get back. Everybody, the movie premieres. We are not alone tomorrow. Yay. We've got the links up. All right. So go and check it out, Serena. I'll call you when I get back. Cool. Take care, and thanks, guys, for listening. Bye. The very best, Serena DC, everybody. And with that, I'm going to get out of here. I've got to go. My bags are in the car. They are in the car. I'm going to pop out the uh, 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 the the video feeds and get the, the podcast up. Everybody else gets that done. And that's it. I'm hitting the road. And so everybody have fun while I'm gone. I'll be posting. I'll be live streaming from Egypt. With that, be safe. Have a great night. This is Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Fade to Black is produced by Hilton J. Palm, Renee Newman, and Michelle Freed. I got to gotta thank Bill. I got to thank John aside. You guys are the best. The very best. Thank you to Dennis and Kevin as well. Webmaster is Drew the Geek. Music, Doug Aldrich. Intro, Space Boy. Spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network. And also... It is copyrighted 2023 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network, Inc. It cannot be rebroadcast, copied, or downloaded anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Everybody be safe. I'll be back in 10 days. Don't trip. All right? It'll be like I've never, I never left. Until then, when I come back, October 16th, we'll be broadcasting right here. Until then. Go back, Lee Tappy.